You may be a native English speaker, but this does not mean you understand English. <laughs> Told you, I found 11 mighty confusing English dialects to test your skills. First, try to guess the country, then guess the dialect. And if you get it right, you can brag in the comments, but you probably won't. We're going to nationalise them, that'll be the end of all the work. I've been good shepherds left ever. It's not the young men that are going to get them. They won't get them a decent living again, out there. If you know what a butter loggy is, well, then you might know this dialect. It has the same roots as Scots, and they were once part of the same kingdom. So while most English accents were influenced by the Saxons, this English was shaped by the Angles. Now, I'm talking about Northumbrian. English. The Angles lived mostly in present-day Denmark, and the first time the Vikings invaded England, well, it was right here. So are there some shared Scandinavian words? Well, these words here are Old Norse, so you tell me. Northumbrian has a few varieties. I think the shop one is in the business one is what you do well. All is, all, uh, there's more park. There's less parking spots, there's more people having to park. And even if you have no idea what he just said, you might know about a more famous version. Geordie. Geordie has its own special character. And Corbia Creels. This must be a Northumberland like this. Even in the 1500s, the London elite thought that this was the strangest accent. And what is a butterloggy? Well, it comes from a Viking word and it means a butterfly. And what I want to be calling someone is say you're telling someone, come over here. Hey, bring your ass here, boy. No, <laughs> <laughs> come, come, come here, boy. Come here, boy. Come now. Now, if you know this one straight away, then I will be impressed. I will, but I think you need a bit more. We're gonna do a one night camp somewhere up Madame or so Blanche says we're not sure yet. We're gonna check the sea state conditions, and once we get up there, we're gonna see what beaches look the best. Take come here on your rocks. I'm gonna see that cast. Look at them, look at them beating up on the inside. Woo! The indigenous Arawak people called it the land of the hummingbird, and this lovely English dialect is known for its sing-song sound. Many pirates came ashore to bank their booty over the years, including a certain Englishman who came looking for the mysterious El Dorado, El Dorado, the city of gold. It's been in Spanish, French, and British hands, and they say that by 1814, this island changed hands 31 times. That's right, I am talking about Trinidad, the one with the twin. The island is extremely diverse. African slaves were brought here from other colonies. Immigrant workers were French, German, Chinese, Portuguese, African-American, even Venezuelan. And then huge numbers also arrived from India. The first Creole language in Trinidad was actually French, but within a few generations, they were all speaking English Creole. By this video, I'm going to try to do it a little straight Straight Trinia. I think you want me to do a little straight Trinia or 100% Trini. Like if I'm talking to my mother, kind of Trini, or my brother, kind of Trini. So you have an accent. You who are watching this, you have an accent. I have an accent. Everybody have an accent. What kind of stupid question is that? Yes, everyone has an accent. Nowadays, they speak both Creole and standard Trinidadian English, and it's been the official language since 1823. Mm -hmm. To the left, to the left. Everything you own in a box, to the left. In the closet, that's my stuff. Yes, yes. if I bought it, say, don't touch, oh, don't touch. Keep yelling this, miss, that's fine. Uh, Would you walk and talk at the same time? Like man. Money, yeah, there yeah. is my name that is on that mess, so remove your bag so I can call you. Now, unless you've been to this country, there is no way you're going to guess this one, but please give it a try. Listen for the clue hidden. In my trick, I got an A for bloody English. <laughs> okay, I got a C, but still. <laughs> When I went to America, no one bloody understood me. I'm here on Table Mountains and it's among the faith was diverse. South Africa has many different English accents, but none are as divergent as that of the Cape Coloured community, especially from an area known as the Cape Flats. Matter of fact, even South Africans have a hard time following Cape Flats English if they didn't grow up in Cape Town. And sometimes, even if they did. What? What's the name of the movie? Trankies. Trankies. No, Trankies. Trankies. What's the name? Trankies. No, I told you Trankies. Trankies. <laughs> Tell me again. I told you. Take a kiss. It's an incredibly colourful way of speaking, heavily influenced by Afrikaans, specifically Cape Flat Afrikaans. This dialect has roots in the 19th century working class residential areas in inner city Cape Town. One interesting feature is the 
double negative, as is, no, I didn't see nothing. That's straight out of Afrikaans. As for this video, well, it's straight out of story learning. And if you like it and want to know more, please let me know. You know what to do. Yeah, Dad and all of them, well, Dad and them was raised here around here. And uh, we was up the road there a little ways where Dad went in when he got married. We was all raised up here, but this is Grandma's and Dad's old house place. We owned by the water gap. He's really getting about this time late and he ain't getting dark. Wouldn't you just love to hear that whole story? I have a feeling that even if you couldn't quite get him, you'll recognise his accent. And if you fancy a sort of Scottish-Irish flavoured Elizabethan English, well, better move down to the Smoky Mountains. Appalachian English is full of wonderful vintage sayings, but the best part is certain words and phrases still have the same meanings that they did hundreds of years ago. For example, I don't care to really means, sure, I'd be happy to. And you know what? It was once the high-ranking nobles of England and Scotland who spoke this way. I heard a big clap of thunder and then it commenced to raining. I've been working and working on this and I'm having a little bit of a trouble. And as you can see, it's still side goggling. The mountains of Appalachia were once a haven for mostly Scots-Irish immigrants who wanted to escape colonial rule in America. And down here, they were pretty isolated from mainstream American life for many generations. So they kept those old speech forms. There were native American and Africans here too, and they all blended together to become something quite unique. They say weird things like this, all the way from medieval Ireland. And something all the way from Storyland is, well, this video, of course. So if you like what you see, please click these three buttons right here. Much obliged. I don't know, cast on. I uncle going fa very fast, already, you know. I'm going faster and scary government catch me, huh? I'm a very visual one now, always watching. Welcome to a very multicultural part of the world. It's been this way for hundreds of years, and in our great grandparents' time, people who lived here were still saying things like thee and thou art. It's a country with numerous languages, and in village life back in the day, this was a problem. See, people made a living buying and selling, and it's hard to buy and sell when you can't understand each other. The dialect I'm talking about is Singaporean English. I think Singapore accent is quite like sharp, like da, 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 da. like oh, okay. instead of like very like. Uh... It depends on like how they speak because sometimes you can tell if it's natural or it's those exaggerated types. Mm, mm. Uh, let's say halfway like in their teenage years, they decide like okay lah, I want to speak with Angmo accent and then. <laughs> you probably understand the standard version, but the informal version, Singlish, has been a phenomenon since the 1970s. It has its own unique grammatical structure, and the idea is to use as few sounds as possible to get the message across. In other words, Singapore English is very, very efficient. Yes, of course. That shouldn't be a problem in the slightest. In fact, I'll be more than happy to do it. Becomes can. The intonation and sentence structure are influenced by various local dialects of Chinese. Thing is, for most of Singapore's colonial history, English was a minority language that only the elite used, but after independence in 1965, English became an essential bridge. Kids learned standard Singapore English at school, but it's completely normal to speak Singlish, and the average Singaporean sees it as a real part of their identity. So yes, it's very, very relevant. Now you know what this one is. It is a land where English-speaking pirates once ran riot, and the main port became known as the wealthiest and wickedest city in the world. Waking up, feel what and waking up. Right through the house, through the bathroom, through every door, kitchen door, every door. The first people in Jamaica were the Arawaks, who arrived in canoes from South America about 2,500 years ago. Next came the Spanish, and then the English, and both brought slaves that they'd captured in Africa. Also, 2,000 Irish girls and guys were kidnapped and sent to Jamaica, and more came escaping the wars in Ireland. These Irish workers taught English to the Africans and a pidgin language was born. Meanwhile, a lot of Africans and Arawaks escaped and fled to the mountains where their own language developed. Jamaican Patois. Now, Patois isn't actually considered a dialect of English. It has too many loan words, mostly African. But Jamaicans also speak standard English. I'm not saying this and saying that because of money, you know. Yeah. It's just because the people need me and they appreciate coming around me, you know. Yeah. So I'm not doing it like Babylon people say, I'm, I want to make more money, 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 money. I'm just expand because the people want the space, so I gotta make the space bigger. That's people can come and enjoy themselves, okay? Jamaican English has quite a bit of American in it these days, but thank goodness, still tons of Patois expressions. 
Well, it's full tick out there now. I don't want sour puss going out there. Yeah, that's not good, Jerry, but I know. Yeah, it's good seeing you, boy. Let's go for a beer some now. Yes, yeah, for sure. It looks up in the book now. Yes, yeah, take care, old man. Take care, my son. If you guessed Irish, you're wrong. It was one of the first areas of the New World that Europeans discovered. First came the Vikings in 1000 AD, then fishermen and explorers, and from 1630 on, settlers came with all these language and dialects. And of course, there were indigenous languages too. We're talking about a dialect called Newfoundland English. We're on a bit of an hiatus from Thor. She's gone back to Alberta for a couple of weeks, and I met Arbor Grace, my father, for a couple of weeks when my sister's gone away up to Labrador. But now we're going to be back at it again soon, so make sure you get your Vax passports like and get out and see the shows. You know, I have a laugh, buy a few tickets for you. Newfoundland is an island off Canada, a cold place. Most of the brave early immigrants who stayed were from southwest England and south. East Ireland, and they lived here in isolation for a very long time. The British colony only became part of Canada in 1949, so you weren't imagining it, they really do speak differently from the rest of Canada. Today's Newfoundland... Newf <laughs> New Newfoundlanders, there we go, have English, Scottish, and French in them, but they are mostly of Irish descent. They say the dialect sounds quite 18th century Munster Irish, and there are even a few traces of Irish Gaelic left in the grammar. Pretty interesting, huh? And if you like language stories like this, especially if you're keen on learning a new language yourself, you might find my method of teaching and learning languages really quite fun. See, I use stories to teach languages and my students all around the world, well, they really like it. If you want to check it out, maybe see if you like the method, take a look in the, at the link in the description. I've left you something free called the Story Learning Kit. It has a bunch of goodies that show you exactly how to learn languages through stories. Now, after that tongue twister, where exactly were we? Listen to me. If a guy needs my tell you on me yourself, just know. Relax. Relax. Don't hype up. Don't. When a guy needs my tell you on me yourself, Dan, yeah. just walk away. Good luck. Don't even look at the man too hard. Walk away, Dan. I can't wait to give you this clue. You ready? It's the only English speaking country on an entire continent. What could it be? Why does me put no ring on your finger? I mean, you no reason to be vexed. I could pull aside, we can have a conversation to be a three of a car. I mean, no reason for you being out on a date with somebody on a long time we in a relationship. It's known as the land of many waters, and it's a sovereign state on the north coast of South America. That's culturally part of the English Caribbean, and it shares the same legacy with these countries. Yes, Guyana to the world! Yep, this is Guyana and a multicultural country it is. Once upon a time in the 17th century, there were three Dutch colonies in Guyana and each had its own Creole version of Dutch mixed with a West African language called Calabari. But many different colonial powers have fought over Guyana, so historically they've been exposed to various cultures and languages. Let me take you back to the culture. Flying high in the sky, let the whole world see, let the whole world see, let the whole world see. In the 19th century, it was a British colony called British Guyana. More slaves came from West Africa and Barbados, and the inevitable pidgin language was formed. Mostly English words with sounds and features of African language. There was a little mixing with the Dutch Creoles, but not much because those were already dying out by that point. Later on, a ton of indentured workers arrived from India, and this brought a completely new language influence. Guyana has been independent now since 1966, but English is still the official language. Locals call their dialect Creole or Guyanese, and it ranges from standard English to a much broader Creole. As for the indigenous tribes, they were never wiped out here, luckily, and if you wander into the interior, you might even hear these influences. Peggy, Craig Newton. I just put down to Royal Edinburgh College to help get the job. There's too much discrimination in this town, man, because they're both schools, right? And we're all in this together. And I wanted to put across the general idea rather than the details. Like, people get all hung up on details. Like, which school did I go to? How many organs did I get? Could be like six, could be none. It's not important. What is important? Is the I am, yes? Here is a dialect with a famous history. The people who've lived here for centuries have ancestors who were Celts, Vikings, and Anglo Saxons. So, where are we now? We are in. Glasgow, Scotland. Can I just ask, first of all, what you were doing there? Slashes, slashes, same way. I've been through this, right? I wasn't even met by her, right? I was a starter. I mean, only met her by her, right? But my colleagues are shouting, you know, text and all the It was in a text. Right? Like, you know, what's up? <laughs> so you understood every word of that, didn't you? Oh, you didn't? Well, Glasgow was a port where many desperate immigrants once arrived from Ireland, Eastern Europe, and Italy, and where a lot of Highlanders 
also happened to come for work, not your everyday combination. Funny story, the Italians were tricked. They thought they were on ships to America, which explains the many ice cream parlors that sprang up. But if the dialect baffles you, don't blame Italian. The Irish and Scots influences are very, very strong. Mind you, Glaswegians do speak incredibly fast and have a lot of Italian surnames. All right there, good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Bloody chilly, innit? <laughs> Lots of snow everywhere. Can you imagine speaking just like your ancestors did? Well, for hundreds of years, the inhabitants of this island have refused to let go of the old ways. They have a unique way of speaking that's been passed down from the earliest English settlers who came from Cornwall. I'm talking about the Tangier Island in uh, Chesapeake Bay, an estuary off the eastern shore of Virginia. Yes, America. No. Yeah, I, I, actually, I had to get out of oh, yeah. mom's been calling, calling, calling the casting out there all day. She was about to counter. She said, it's a lie, Jack. I said, who's that, man? <laughs> <laughs> the Tangier dialect has changed a lot over the decades. That's going to happen. But because of its isolation, there was no outside influence, and it became a creation of its own. Where to go, Tangier? Can I get a French fry hat? I like it. I like it for you to be in it. Where? Okay, can I get um, the small children and mule? The what? The children and mule. The baby, the baby mule. Confused? Okay, this guy will tell you where he's from, so listen up. Any city can speak like Britain English, any city can yell like Britain English. They say like Britain America is the same thing. So if I go try them out, let's see if they can hear how cool Did you get that? This country has more than 20 languages, but none as big as English. They have four kinds, in fact. English has been the official language since 1824, and about three million people speak it. There's also a Creole that people use as a second language. I am talking about Liberia. Liberia's in West Africa, and it has the fastest growing population in the world. So today, Day to day, when you are dressed up fine like me, and you are zooting your gold watch and all the eh? people will look at you and say, my man, you want to kill Blay? Hey! That's why they say when Blay see Blay, Blay run, because Blay don't want to die. He don't want to see it dress, anybody dressed better than him. Before the 21st century, they simply called all the dialects English, but nowadays they call them colloqua. So why all the varieties? Well, in the 19th century, Liberia had a pidgin English called crew that sailors and migrant workers spoke. They pick it up at sea. But then 16,000 African American immigrants sailed to Liberia, and obviously they couldn't speak the local languages. If you never ate pancana, you never ate tabagi or plava saw, you're not going to stand nothing I'm saying right now. So their descendants are the ones who speak Liberian settler English, which still has some archaic American expressions. Settler English then influenced Coloqua. You still with me here? Well, anyway, later there was a 14-year civil war in Liberia, and believe me, it was a strong motivator to find a common language. One cool thing Liberians do is they speak with suffixes to convey their emotion, good or bad. They say, oh after everything. <laughs> they say, oh, after everything. I'm um, like, come let you, oh. my man, we're going, oh. Where are you going, oh? My man, how you feeling, oh? If you ask me, Liberians sound pretty cool. Truth time, how many did you guess right from the very first clip? Come on, tell me the truth, and how many did you guess with the clues? Let me know in the comments how many you got, and now it is time for something completely different with this next video.